Okay. So, I've got a story for you. A little catfish story. Um, so, I met this guy, Dave, on a live stream site. Kind of like Twitch, kind of. But um, we were just chatting one night. I'm talking to all my fans and all this, this, this. And he sees a guitar in the background. That one back there. And he says, do you play that guitar or is it just a prop? <laughs> now this goofy, this goofy mofo. And I just kind of, we clicked. Like instantly, it was like an instant click. And I don't do that with that many people. Um, like I have a hard time connecting with people in real life, let alone online. And the fact that we were able to do that, like... It was a nice feeling. So things slowly progressed from one thing to another. And it turned into this beautiful thing, you know. This thing that I hadn't had in a really a really long time. And I waited a long time to tell this story. Just cuz at first I couldn't tell it without crying because I felt hard for this dude. And it hurt. It hurt oh, a lot. And it still hurts some days. I still think about him. Um, okay. So, Dave. Dave was this fun-loving guy. You know, he never let me feel alone. He always called me when I was sad. You know, he, had, he really loved me. And I was sad that the rest wasn't true. So, Dave describes himself as a 6'2 something guy, 200 and something pounds, athletic, runs marathons, acts, sings, plays guitar, like, like this dream guy, like, that I've always wanted, you know, like, this awesome guy, but... You know they say not to believe something everybody some everything that somebody tells you, which that is true. But I fall in love with minds and not faces. So I let him get away with not video chatting me. Um Yeah, for three months. Um This is what he said that he looked like ten years ago when he was my age. Because he was 33, and I'm 22. And he wasn't a bad-looking guy. Like, this guy isn't a bad-looking guy. Um, I'll leave the after photo for the end. I kind of wish I knew who this dude was, because... I don't know. Looks like a cool dude. Hey. <laughs> um... He said that his mom was... Dying of stage four breast cancer. Um, that was a story about his mom. A story about his sister is that she was a drug addict and that he took care of her kids for a year. And that her kids were almost like his kids. Um, so the story behind his mom, no, not his mom, his sister. Not his sister. I just said the story about the mom and the sister. A story about his dad. Okay. So he came home when he was 15 to his dad sitting in the car with exhaust pointed in committing... Like, he said his dad committed suicide and then he walked in on it. Make a long story short. And like he was real emotional about all this, you know? Like, we had really long chats every night about it. Him crying and I just comforted him and, you know, I was there for him. And he needed that. He really needed that. More than I knew he did. And... Okay, so he said that he was this businessman, that he was a salesman, that he sold guns and ammunition across the country and, like, to ri big rich guys, like, gold-encrusted, like, handguns. And, like, he's real, it was real factual, so it sounded really legit. You know, nothing's ever as it sounds either. So there's that. <laughs> He made me feel like 
I was the best girl in the world, you know? Like, I was so good to him. And every night, he'd be like, are you sure you love me? Are you sure you're not gonna hurt me? Are you sure you're real? Are you real? I should have asked him if he was real. But I didn't think to. Um, yeah. So, we were supposed to see each other on Valentine's Day. Like, he was supposed to come here. And... He said his mom was on hospice. So he had to cancel the trip. And that same week, he tried to get me to come down. I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't feel comfortable with this. It's my first time. I want you to come here. And he was so upset about that. Like, unreasonably upset for someone who could just come here anytime. As he said. I'm like, okay. Whatever. Be mad. It's okay. I love you. Don't worry about it. Um, actually, I didn't tell him I love him back, like, at that moment. Like, he tried to say it, but, like, I wasn't ready. And he was upset about that, too. Like, it's a weird thing to be upset about, but... You can't just force someone to be ready. Um, and then a week or two after that, I don't hear from him all day. I got a text from someone claiming claiming to be his nephew and then his niece um, saying that he'd been in, a, been in a bad wreck that felt that his legs had burned or maybe one leg had burned, something like that. Like, um... I got a call later that night saying he'd been hit by a semi. That it just drove off. His seat caught fire. And when they pulled him out, he was still on fire. So here I am freaking out, confessing my love and all this shit. I did. I confessed my love that night. And it was a really, really hard month. Like, he was always doped up on some painkillers, which there were some funny nights, you know? Some really funny nights. We talked about a lot. Talked about a lot. This is a really hard story to tell, and oh, I'm surprised I'm actually telling it right now. And then he said he had non Hodgkin's lymphoma, which I wasn't worried about that, because that is the most curable form of cancer, like... I ain't freaking out about that, you know? I think it's curable. So, there came a time when I didn't hear from him for three days. And I freaked out. Like, I was freaking out. I didn't sleep at all that night. I stayed up till like 4 a.m. and then I called the hospital. And The hospital that he said he was at, he wasn't at. Like, he wasn't even a patient there. So, then, then I looked at the medical chart that he showed me, because, like, he was showing me, like, all these drugs I had him on. And it was Sunnyview. So, either Sunnyview or Sunnyfield. So, I called him, and I'm able to get a hold of his nurse by giving him, giving them his room number, because his room number was on the chart that he sent me. And... A couple hours later, this mom calls me. The mom and the niece call me. Not the mom, like, the niece's mom and her. So they call me, which is his sister, and they're like, quit contacting us. We don't know you. Like, who are you? Like, I'm his girlfriend. She's like, and? We don't know you. Which is confusing, because, like, I thought I had talked to all of them. Like, I thought I had talked to every single one of them. Like, that's weird. Like, I didn't really know what was going on at that point yet. They just said that he was on a ventilator and he wasn't doing good. So, I go back to work. This, 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 this. I get out of work and I'm on my way home. And the mom calls me. The mom that he said had died. Okay. So, she's like, they're going to keep him under for a while. He's not doing good. This, 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 this. How long have you known him? This, 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 this. You know, you know how mom, moms have, act, you know. And I'm like, are you his aunt? He says, mom passed away. He's like, I don't know why he keeps telling people that. I'm like, 
Okay, so in my mind, I'm like, keeps telling people that, like, where's the story? What's actually going on? What's happening? What has he said? What is he doing? Um, anyways, so fast forward maybe a week later, and I call again to try to get some answers. That's when I found out that he's dying and that he was a 600-pound dude. He never got into a car wreck. He'd never had a job in his life. I never talked to the nieces or nephews or sister or anyone. Nobody knew about me. Oh, and there was this inside joke about some, like, a Milk Does nickname. That wasn't true either. Um, oh, and a week previous, he had gotten me to send him $200 for a dog sitter because they were going to take his dogs to the pound. That didn't happen either. So I lost out on $200 and... And he had passed away. So, like, the hardest part is that he didn't get to give me those answers, like, himself. He was not able to able to tell me why. But here's, here's he. Here's him. He's in the center. He's right there in the black. That's him. The redhead in the center. Like, man, talk about a messed up, like, way to find out that someone isn't who you say they are. And then a week later, the producer from Catfish calls me, trying to get me to be on their show. Well, the mom didn't want to do it, so... My only guess is that she already knew about it. I think they all knew about it. They knew that he was lying to other females. And that's the worst part about it. Because I didn't find out about anything until he was gone. So, I guess that's the conclusion to my story. Um, I might go back and edit in some more. But, yeah.